But do, yes, it would be nice. Yeah, do pose your questions to me because I'm quite happy to answer them if I can. But right. I don't know the answer I'm going to tell you I don't know. <laughs> okay, because there are things I don't know about mediumship. There's things I don't know about altered states. I don't know everything because I don't think anybody does. I'm just going to... Um, oh, where's it going? Ah, I'm just going to go on to Facebook Live. And there's always a delay, isn't there, on Facebook Live? But we should be there in a moment. So just bear with me, everybody. Preparing the live stream now. It's amazing this is, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. It's a, going to be a beautiful day today. <coughs> no, we've been lucky, haven't we, that the weather yes. is so good. Right. I feel this Mandela. Title, right. I've got that um, hummingbird one that uh, Dee did for you. Oh, right. Yeah, it's beautiful, actually. Ooh. We should do something with it. Okay, just waiting for us to go on now, hopefully. The, the magic of the internet. Well, you're cleverer than me because I can't even switch it on, so <laughs> you have my sympathy. I do I have to do, I do the moms. I'm <laughs> <laughs> there we go okay so good morning Mavis and I know Jean's not far away so good morning Jean good, good morning, morning. Good morning good morning thank you so much for being with us this morning and I was quite excited to actually just sit and natter to you because you're always so so busy and you're usually um, living in between one suitcase and one bedroom and then rushing to somewhere else. So yeah. how are you finding this downtime, Mavis? Uh, I'm loving it. Actually, <laughs> the lockdown's been fabulous. Uh, uh, of course, because, uh, you know, no cases on view at the moment. You know that song, Another Suitcase in Another Hall. That's what we've gone through <laughs> these last few years. So, no, it's been lovely for us and... Uh, uh, and we've enjoyed it. We've been busier than ever because, yes. of course, this machine gives us the opportunity of being busy in a, on another level. Yes. Um, and, of course, it's expanded mediumship, hasn't it? Because we've all thought, oh, well, I can't yeah. do that and I can't do this and I can't do no, the other. And it's amazing what you can do without a person actually physically in front of you. Yes. You know, it's just been amazing. Uh, the transformation of our thinking and our and and exploring what we can do without actually having to have a physical person there, so that's good. But I do miss having the that hug and that yes. talk, that closeness. You miss that, don't you? I mean, I can see Ola and I can see Brenda and uh, and you know if they were with me. I mean, I know we're on lockdown and we can't hug, but naturally these two people would be the ones I'd go hi you know yeah so uh, you miss that you miss that don't you you miss you that do. interaction on a physical level you do but, no we've been very busy haven't we very I mean Jean well, goes to sleep with it and gets up in the morning with it and I just <laughs> turn up <laughs> so I know that you've been a wonderful spiritualist medium and you have dedicated a great deal of your life to serving the spirit world what was the turning point in your life when you realized that this is a gift i have mm. uh i don't know i don't know that i i don't know that i recognized the importance of it at the beginning I really don't. I think that because I saw and because I heard uh, 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 and because it, it was an interaction that was so natural and normal. Um, I mean, I'd only got three months to live anyway. So, you know, I was coming to the end of my life. So, uh, so to have the spirit world there was, was, was remarkable. Um, and, and actually, in a way, they became a crutch. 
you know, because I didn't do anything without the spirit world told me to do, or, um, uh, you know, I, I, I just didn't. So I never have thought about, about mediumship being a gift. And I do hear people say, no, I've got you know, the gift of mediumship. I don't think we've got a gift. I think that the spirit world is the gift. So, you know, for me, I suppose I've looked at it from another point of view. I honestly believe we're the servants of the spirit world. If it was a gift, then it would mean we were receiving. But we're not, we're actually giving. So we have to be serving. So for me, that changed my whole perception um, yes. of what it was about, really. Um, but at the beginning, I, I just thought it was just um, it was just a happening that was going to help me to cope with death, really. I suppose that's how I looked at it at the beginning. Um, you know, I think the psychic power is the only gift we've got to give away. So when we interact with healing or we interact by psychically saying, you know, um, reading the tarot cards, doing the rune stones, doing things like that. I think that that becomes the gift we can give because it's our yeah. gift to give. But with the spirit world, I think the gift is the spirit world coming and we serve the spirit world and then we serve the people here. So really, actually, we're the servants. Yes. And, yeah. and I think that keeps that that nice feeling. I, I've got my feet on the floor. Okay. <laughs> Um, and, and another thing you see we've got a problem with, with the word gift, is this. If we are gifted, it means there are other people that are not. And then you start another hierarchy situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, within spiritualism, we have no hierarchy. We are all equal, no matter who we are. Whether we haven't got the ability to link with the spirit world or we have, we are equal. Yes, and that's I think if anything that's what I love about being a spiritualist is that we are all equal in the sight of the great spirit yes you know yeah. so you know we can't say we are gifted ones or God gave us a gift he didn't he gave us life which is a gift yes. but then he gave that to everybody he gave the soul to us which is a gift but he gave the soul to everybody he gave his you know, the part of himself to us or his self to us, and that's a gift. But mediumship, it, we're just part of the whole. Yes. I love that saying, and I don't know if you've read it in the Lyceum Manual, and I think it's absolutely superb. We are all part of one stupendous whole whose body nature is but God the soul. And I think that tells us that nobody is any different from another. Uh, and that's what I love about it. But that's what I love about being being a spiritualist is we have no hierarchy. We've no medium better than another medium. We have no greater than another, unless you're talking about Gordon, of course. <laughs> and that's it. That's the you, we've gone into a, a different different understanding totally when we're talking about Gordon. But but for you and I, we're just ordinary people that have this wonderful wonderful soul ability. So uh, it's a faculty really, isn't it? It's like the soul's a big muscle and it, it starts to work and suddenly we've got clairsentience and we've got clairvoyance and we've got claircognizance and we've got all the other attributes that, that are within the soul that we offer to the spirit world and that's how it works. So that's how I see it. So when you first went into a spiritualist church, which church was, was it, Mavis? It was in Middleton, because I come from Middleton, um, and, uh, you know, that's outside Manchester. Uh, it's yeah. really in the Cotton area, Cotton Mill area. Um, and um, it was called Gilmore Street. Uh, so I went in, um, because I was seeing the spirit world, and I was hearing them, but I didn't know what to do. Um, I certainly felt that I'd got an evil entity with me, um, and that things were very, very wrong, and I shouldn't be doing this. Um, so I went for an exorcism, um, and I, I'm sat in the church working for the min waiting for the minister to go and talk to the bishop uh, about my exorcism. And Mixan, that's my main control, actually just said, if I should ask you ever to harm anyone, um, if I should ask you to harm anyone, then... Um, then you know that I'm evil until that time come and walk with me. So I did. I walked out of the church 
and I found Gilmore Street. And then I realized that I was with a lot of other people that could see the spirit world and a lot of other people that could hear them. And, and, and I started to feel pretty safe. And, I, and that's where I started to grow. Uh, so that was where I was at the beginning. Right. Okay, so I was at Gilmore Street um, in Middleton. That's where the whole thing started. And it's not there now. Um, it it's, no, it's become a house, just an ordinary house. Oh. Because, you know, some of the churches uh, in my day, they were houses that had just yeah. been turned into into churches and dedicated. They were all like Longton or Hanley <laughs> or Hyde, uh, you know, so, uh, so that's where I began. Right. So you sat in circle or, or did you have a particular mentor? I had a guy called Mr. Brooks who was not a medium but was a spiritualist. So uh, he really took me through the seven principles. He taught me about the Lyceum Manual. Um, he was there um, and he would watch me work, but they would never let me uh, do a demonstration because it was on a platform. You know, they used to have us high up on a platform. Yeah. Uh, and because I was in my mini skirts and you could see my knickers, they wouldn't let me work. Okay. Um, uh, so, you know, so I wasn't allowed to work for a long, long time. Um, going into circle, as long as it wasn't a meditation circle, I found meditation very distracting. I couldn't do it. Uh, so I got thrown out of those circles. But I could sit for the development circle. But I really grew up in an open circle, you know, where you pull the service up at 20 to 9, and then the people in the audience get the chance to work. Yes. So if there were mediums like me, I could then get up and say what I'd seen. Okay. Yes. So I developed really more in open circle than I did in a closed circle. Okay. Um, uh, that's where I really uh, honed uh, my, my knowledge from. And where did you take your first service? When you were allowed out? <laughs> when I was allowed out. Uh, a lovely, lovely old lady with a woolly cap pulled down over her head and no teeth in. About 92, so she was a lot older than me. She said, I'll take you out, maybe you can come with me. So I went and it was again a house. So it was a house that was a church uh, and the platform was in the corner. And I remember going up, um, climbing up this, it was like a ladder. You climbed up to get onto it. And um, uh, there was a, a cobweb at the top and a mouse at the bottom. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and I remember Miss, uh, Mrs. Fletcher, she was called, and she said, right, Mavis, what have you got? So I got up and I delivered what I'd got and I gave two contacts and I sat down and there would have been about 40 people in there, not more because you couldn't hold more. And she said, who hasn't had a message? And they all put their hands up and she went, 23rd Psalm, I'll give you a rose from your dad. And she went, and every hand went down like this <laughs> along the rows. So that is how it started for me. It was fun. Okay. <laughs> and I only did the two contacts. And I'm not sure whether it was because of the mouse I could see or whether it was the cobweb that was touching my hair because my <laughs> hair was piled up like this. So, you know, uh, you know, along with the tears, there's been a lot of joy. I mean, there's been a lot of tears. I think mediumship is a pearl of great price. It, you know, you go through the ups and downs and the traumas and you lose it and you've got it and then it, 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 it's beautiful and then it doesn't work right. And so it's a pearl of great price and, um, and it takes a long time to develop it, but you have to keep your balance. You've got to have that humour knitted into it. Yeah. Otherwise you go under, don't you? you take a nose dive. Okay. Yes. So... You must have started within your, within your community, within your area. So when you started to branch out into other districts, oh. what was that like? Oh, it was, well, I got an invite to go to Hyde Church, which was the epicenter yes. of, uh, of, of, of our area, if you like, the Manchester district area. So if you were invited to hide, my goodness gracious me, your head became like this. It meant that you'd almost <laughs> made it. It was the mecca, so to speak. Uh, so I went there um, and I was only allowed to do the bright hour. 
Now, the bright hour was when all the old dears and the committee would go and they, you would demonstrate in the bright hour to these uh, old people. And, um, uh, and if you passed, then you got invited to do a, a clairvoyant evening. If you passed the clairvoyant evening, then you got invited to do the Sunday service. Right. Fortunately for me, I got um, uh, invited, Mr. and Mrs. Hyde, that was the name of the president. Yes, Mr. I remember. Mrs. Them. Hyde from Hyde, okay, grand couple, grand couple. But they took me under their wing, okay, so I was under their wing for a little while, so I learned a lot from them and they became, um, I suppose, like my spiritual parents, really. Uh, they guided me through a lot. Uh, but Mr. Hyde was not amused because they introduced me then to Longton. Well, they didn't introduce me to Longton, that's wrong. They introduced me to Gordon. And uh, Mr. Hyde had said, you need to see this girl. Uh, you need to see her. And, uh, of course, Gordon uh, came and I met Gordon. And then I was invited to Longton. I still had to do that bright hour. <laughs> so I still had to go through that same you know, investigation to make sure yeah. I could do it. I wasn't allowed to be, just get up there and work. So, uh, uh, so I did that. But with, High, uh, with Longton Church, it was a little bit different because you only worked with the committee. So the Bright Hour was only the committee yeah. and it was only the leaders of the church. So if you didn't pass that, then you would never get invited to Longton Church. Wow. So fortunately for me, um, I think I had to do that about three or four times before I was allowed to do a clairvoyant service. And then again, it must have been a while before I was allowed a Sunday service because Gordon was a stickler for the philosophy. He was a stickler. You know, he, he didn't like you talking about yourself, so you couldn't get up there and say, well, this happened to me or this happened to Matt. You couldn't use that as philosophy. You had to actually use the seven principles or something related to spiritualism, you know. So um, he liked to know that you knew. So you knew the theory of spiritualism before you work. So, uh, so you, you know, it took a while. But then um, I went to do the clairvoyant service. And all I can remember is there was this man sat on the back row and um, he'd got his cap on. And I thought, how ignorant is that man that he hasn't took his cap on? Cap <laughs> off. In a church, Gordon would be furious, you know, that he hasn't took his cap off. Do the service and, uh, uh, and I, I'm in the side room and up uh, this man with the cap walks takes his cap on off and it was Gordon and he comes to watch me work. Well, I was so glad he'd had his cap on because I'd have died if I'd have seen him there, I think, at that time. Uh, so really, uh, a lot of wonderful things, a lot of wonderful, wonderful times for me. Uh, Longton means a lot to me um, and it always did. Um, and the new Longton, of course, is beautiful. Uh, I mean, the atmosphere is, it is wonderful when you walk in. Um, but I love that, that it's been kept, that spiritual sanctuary. Uh, so, so it's lovely. It's lovely when I'm invited to come. Okay. Well, yes, and we love having you. I don't think there's a church that doesn't, to be fair. I think most churches would like to book you as, as often as they could. Um, and that, that is the truth of it. Um, and so your, your, your um, introduction to Gordon... And then, of course, that unfolded that beautiful friendship that was to last. Yeah, well, when I, when I, I met Gordon, and I, I was working, but I actually had tuberculosis. I just had a serious hysterectomy, and they thought I'd got cancer. I mean, there wasn't the scans, and there wasn't the treatment that you've got today. I mean, we're very, very fortunate today that, that people have researched and found ways of, of, of diagnosing it even. Yeah. But of course, because they thought that that's what I got, uh, I, was, I wasn't being treated. I was just being given palliative care. Um, and fortunately for me, um, there was a test done at one of the labs and they found that it was TB that I'd got, tuberculosis, so I could start having treatment. But I was very sick. Yeah. But I was all, already on platform, already going to Longton. And, um, and Gordon said to, said to me, I think I'll take you down to the college, come down to the college with me. 
So uh, the, when I went at the beginning, I went for healing. That's what he took me for majorly. Um, so, I, you know, the large lounge, there's a large, large lounge at yes. the college. Well, I would just lie on a day bed there um, uh, all day, really, unless I wanted to just go in and, uh, and listen to, to Gordon or listen to another medium. Um, and that's how I went to the college at the beginning. And then later on, as I got stronger, Gordon would then say, I want you to do a couple of private sittings. And then he'd say, I want you to do a demonstration. And then I want you to work in the sanctuary. And then I want you to teach, okay? But this is what I want you to teach. So it wasn't, oh, well, go and teach something. It was, now look, I want you to do awareness and I want you to cover this. Um, and that was how I was brought up with Gordon, that there was always a structure yeah. And, uh, and for me, it was important that I had that structure. Uh, and because I respected him so much, I just followed the structure, you know, and, and, and I think it served me well, really. Um, well, I think so. You've been doing it a few years now. <laughs> yeah. I think this, is this 54? Yeah. Uh, you know, it, yes, it's 54 years. But would I swap a moment of it? No, I wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, I've had breaks, don't get me wrong. I've had breaks where I've shut the door on it completely. Uh, and one time I, I, I just said to Gordon, that's it, I've finished. I don't want to do any more. Um, and of course, if you say that and you mean it, then the spirit world has to back off. Yes. They can't, they can't force you to work. Uh, it's such a fall fallacy when you hear people saying, oh, and the spirit world told me I've got to do this. They can't. They're breaking the law if they do. And they won't do that. Um, but so so they backed off and Gordon backed off. He he respected me enough to say, okay, um, you know. Um, so I would have been about twelve months, did I say? It might have been more. I'm sorry, I keep turning to Jean, but no, it's fine. my memory bank. She's my <laughs> memory bank, and uh, I couldn't work without her really because my memory is not um, quite as it should be. Um, so. Um, what was I saying? About the time you had off. Oh yeah, I had about, I say I had about 12 months off and then one evening, I, mean, I knew my soul was calling. I knew my soul was saying to me, it's time, it's time. Not the spirit world, but my soul. And then uh, about a week later, the phone goes and Gordon says, I'm at high tonight, are you ready to work? Well, we've been expecting the call. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I, and that was the caliber of the man. But he was naughty, really, you know, because what he would do is stand at his front door and he'd send you thoughts to ring him. And you'd ring him and you'd say, I don't know what I'm ringing you for, but I'm ringing you. Oh, well, I wanted you to call. <laughs> and I'd say, who pays this phone bill? You know, we got to that <laughs> lovely, lovely relationship where we could uh, laugh together. Uh, yeah. it was, uh, absolutely beautiful. Because you knew him um, for quite, well, for a long time. And of course working with him um you know you said when you first met him most people say when i first met him i was scared of him or i was in awe of him did you feel that too me yeah yeah there was a there was a, a power about him i can't really tell you what i mean there unless you felt it but when he walked into a room he his aura his aura it, it, the perfume of his soul wrapped you up that's the best way to explain it. And, and you knew, and when he stood and spoke, he held you in the palm of his hand because you could feel his love for you and what he was saying and his belief and his truth in what he was saying. Um, so you were in awe of him because you think, oh my God, I, I, I can't aspire to that. Who do I think I am to think that I could get close to this? wonderful person um and i'm not saying he didn't have some warts and all because he did when i got to know him he was an ordinary person yeah. um but you know in that initial uh, i mean his mediumship was just you could feel the father you could feel the mother touching their daughter or their son you could feel the presence coming through yeah. but even when he stood and spoke to you he uplifted you. And we've got very, very, very good, few good speakers now. Um, and I just think he was a one-off. I just think he was a one-off. Uh, uh, so I always feel 
very, very grateful that I had the time with him. I mean, I used to travel in the car with him uh, all over the country, up to Scotland and into Wales and down in the south of England. So we were always in the car together. Uh, and it was amazing because we'd start a topic and he'd be away and he'd be driving. I didn't drive. He'd be driving, but you still could feel that emanation of his faith and his belief in what he was saying. And I think that that's what really I worry about is I watch some of our mediums work and I think you're too caught up in you, your faith in the spirit. You say you believe in the spirit, but you lack the faith in the spirit because you still have you watching what you're doing. I can't explain it to you, but when Gordon worked, it was as if he released um, any negativity about communication and it just flowed. It just flowed through him. It didn't throw through, flow through his mind. It, it, it moved through him. So he never doubted his mediumship at all. Mm -hmm. And he never doubted the spirit world, you know. Never doubted them at all. Never doubted them. Um, and, and, it, and how can we put that faith in another person? We can't. It's something, it's the pearl of great price. It really is very difficult to let go and let the spirit world do it and think, I'm not going to listen to you saying no to me because I know if the spirit world is saying it's right, then it's right. Yes. And it's getting to that point where we don't rely on the people here to prove to us we're mediums. We rely on the spirit and the soul to prove we're mediums. And I think that's one of the things he taught me. Um, you know, you have to rely on that soul that does the work and offers itself to the spirit world. And you have to rely on the spirit world. You can't rely on the people here. No, you can't, can you? You can't, no, no, no. In, in your own development and I know that as mediums most mediums would say you never fully developed you continue your development it's an ongoing process as is life but do you feel that it was a long process from going into the church initially to then beginning to work how long was that Mavis? Uh, do you mean I mean to work well, when you started... Let, to let, me just, let me just clarify what you're saying. You see, when I worked at the beginning, yes, I worked because that's what I did. When I began to work as a spiritual medium, that would have taken me about, oh, I don't know, 12 years. Okay. Because there's a difference between working just as a medium yes, as working as a spiritual medium. They're two different things altogether. So when I began... I could see the spirit world objectively and I could hear them, but I can't say I was really involved with the God source. I can't really say I was ever worried about the spirit world and what reaction did they have to me and what was my relationship with them. It took me a long time to get that, to, to, to understand that there's more to what we do uh, the, than what I perceived at the beginning. I, I perceived at the beginning, all I needed was to be able to say, I've got your dad here, and for Roger to say to me, yes, that's my dad, and I'd done my work. Mm -hmm. That's what I believed, okay? Um, so it takes a long, long time for you to develop that, that, other, that other aspect of it, that it's a spiritual commitment, and that's why it's a vocation. Yeah. Because once the spiritual side comes up, you start to train again because you're looking at it from a different level altogether. Yes. So, and, and perhaps that's what <laughs> Gordon had because Gordon had it from being a, a small boy and, and Gordon's mum really was steeped in spiritual philosophy and spiritual truth. So he got the both. Well, when I came in, I didn't have the ball. I, all I had was the mechanics that I could do it. Yes. Do you see what I'm trying to get? Yes. Yeah. So did, yeah. did you, um, I mean, I don't know anything about your family, as in when you, you were a, a girl. Um, 
a younger girl, obviously. Um, <laughs> but did you have any religious teachings as a child? Did you? Yeah, I, I was Higher Church of England. I wasn't Catholic, but Higher Church of England, so communion, um, you know, uh, being able to talk to the minister when I felt that I'd done something wrong. So, yeah, I had God sat on a throne and I had going to Jesus to get to God, okay? Yeah. But I could never go myself because I wasn't good enough. And that's the other thing that I love about being a spiritualist. We can all talk to the source. We yes. can all talk to the God. And we don't need a hierarchy. Uh, and, and I love that part of it as well. So, yes, um, when I was little, my sister was a, a, a medium. And, uh, you know, in my day, and I don't, I'm looking at some of you and you're quite young, really, you wouldn't have known what it was like, to, but you had to sleep with your si siblings. You didn't have your own room and you didn't have your own bed. So I slept with my sister and my sister was so, uh, she saw the spirit world, but she used to frighten me to death with it. And I had a nervous breakdown as a child because Joyce, my sister would say, oh, there's a man coming into the room now. And, and there was a gaslight outside our window and she'd wait till it was windy and the gas in the gaslight would be sending shadows into the room and she'd be saying, oh, and this, this, per this ghost is coming in at all. So I had, an, um, I had a nervous breakdown. So everybody in the family was told they were not allowed to talk about the spirit world at all. And that was my mother's law. Uh, they were not allowed to mention it to me. So I grew up knowing nothing about it. But my sister was a medium and my great, my aunt was a medium. So both of them were medium. Um, and I believe that there were other members of the family, but I knew nothing about it. Uh, and basically it's simply because I was neurotic and, um, uh, you know, I'd been frightened and traumatized so much by my sister. Now she didn't mean it because she wasn't an adult. She was a child as well. And she was just telling me what she saw clairvoyantly, you know, so I can never blame my sister for that. Um, but of course, when I got it, it was just such a shock. It was such a shock. And I wanted to turn it off. That was the thing. I didn't want it. I didn't like it. I found nothing nice about it at all. Uh, so that was where I was. And then losing God on a throne was very difficult to me, for me. Yes. You know, because I was used to asking favours. You know, I was used to saying, well, God help me to do this. And, and then, of course, when I got the guys and inspirers, I swapped roles then. And then learning that God wasn't a man, that he was a power, and it was inside me, that was another concept that took me a long time to grasp. Yes. Because, of course, I think it's a, um, a revelation, isn't it? And, and, a, and a moment of awakening when people realise that God does not sit in judgment of anybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very hard to perceive that. But the reason we've got this idea that God sits in judgment on us is because we have made God in our image. Yes. Because we sit in judgment on people. We criticize people. We cut people off. Uh, you know, we can dole out judgments that can hurt people for years. Yes. So, um, and we do do it. And I think that that's what we did. We turned God into a, a human being person instead of us recognizing that it, it's not like that at all. He's got no personality, no character, and he certainly isn't judgmental. Um, uh, you know, but you can understand in this pandemic, don't you? You know, um, how people are, 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 the faith is shaking at the moment because. How can we believe? How could God sat on the throne and let this happen? Well, yes. You know, and it's shaking faith, okay? It's shaking mm -hmm. the faith across the world because I talk to people all over the world and, and there's so many people that not losing faith, but are shaken. It's shaken them because why doesn't God intercede? You know, and, um, and, and of course, God really is interceding we just don't listen that's right yes and we choose to not... ignore it even if we do hear it we choose to ignore it oh, or absolutely absolutely yeah 
Yes. It's very deep philosophical this morning. I haven't worked <laughs> this time in the morning. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but it's the way it just wanders in it in its own way, doesn't it, really? It does, yes. So, it, it's interesting because I'm sure you already know this because Gordon will have told you, I'm sure of it. But as a child, his mum um, came down the stairs one morning and she was one of about eight, I believe. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think she was. I don't know where in 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 the eight she she was, but she came downstairs to tell her mother that she'd been playing with the little girl who had passed away in the street next to them, um, and she she was smacked, mm. and she was told she was a wicked wicked child, and she should never ever do anything like that again, mm. and yet her faith was absolutely like a brick wall nothing could could knock that down could it no nothing nothing at all but the faith didn't come because somebody gave her the faith the faith came from within her yes and that's the thing it's got to come from within you it mm. can't be served to you and it's the same with mediumship you know your faith comes from within you it doesn't come from the spirit world and it doesn't come from the people here. It comes from the faith and the belief in, in the source. Yes. And it's that source that gives you the faith. And that's what keeps you going on, of course. Yes. That's what keeps you going when you really know that was a terrible demonstration I did. Because, of course, mediumship's so volatile. You know, that, that I've been doing this 54 years and I still can do Dems. And I think, my God, I'd have been better off watching Coronation Street. <laughs> I didn't make a good contact at all. What what happened? Okay. Um, because it fluctuates your mediumship. So it's never fully developed. It will always have quality to a degree. But sometimes the quality will rise greater or lesser. Uh, and we have to live with that, you and I. Um, uh, and, and there's a lot of factors that go into it, a lot of factors that, that come to play that make it so volatile. Uh, uh, but doesn't that make life interesting? Wouldn't it be awful if all of us said, oh, yes, I'm the perfect medium and I always do wonderful Dems. Wouldn't it be miserable? Okay. Um, we'd have nothing to actually think, I've still got to find something. I've still got to be an inquirer. I've still got to be working at this. And I think after 54 years, I, I can't say that I know it all. And I can't say my mediumship is, is, is brilliant because I know that there must be other aspects that I haven't actually looked into deep enough. Okay. Um, but isn't that what's exciting about being alive, really? that we've got all this to research and look into and uh, and go for, really. And it's, it's all about being present, isn't it? Yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting. And um, I know that when you started to go to the college and became a tutor, that was, that was um, not a career, <laughs> but a vocation that lasted for some time as well. So how did you find the differences of being at the college to go in to serve the churches and, and do your work in that way? Mm. Did you have a preference? Uh, well, I think the, the college really uh, took me over for a little while. Mm -hmm. You know, it certainly served me ego a lot uh, because, uh, you know, this ordinary cotton mill girl doing all this. So it did do me ego a lot of good, I would say. But God's a blind miller. He grinds us all exceedingly small. Um, and then we become good food for other people. Uh, so you go through that, don't you, first of all. But uh, the problem with teaching, uh, and, and, you, you've, and I found it at the college, um, that you work psychically more than you do mediumistically. Because you're having to link with the person who you're teaching. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you're not going to the spirit world all the time. You, quite often you're having to link to the person um, that you're trying to help to unfold their abilities. Uh, uh, so it, it drops you down a little bit. And it's learning to adjust to that. It's like you work, wear different hats at times. 
Yeah. Okay. So it's getting used to wearing the different hats. Okay. Um, and, and, but for me, my Dems were the salvation. So going back to the churches are my salvation. They still are now. You know, if I've been away, um, it, you know, in America, for instance, and uh, if I go somewhere and they say there's a spiritualist church, would they like me to work for them? Can I go on? You know, because I know that that's where I get my my resource, my, if you like, my spiritual home. Yes. It's, it's the church. Okay, so I'm not, I'm, I can't lose that because I gain so much from it. Um, when I became senior tutor, I had another hat to wear then because then it becomes a little bit more practical. Well, you know, you're, you're president of a church, aren't you? Yeah. So, you know, um, you've sat, I've sat through my CSNU, I've sat through my OSNU, <coughs> and all that is all, you know, this, this what you call it, Jean, educational, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's educational. So you go through all that. And then you go on to this committee and then you're looking, aren't you, at how many eggs are, have been bought and what bricks need doing and how you need to renew the windows. And so that's another hat you wear, OK, as well as trying to organise the teachers of the teachers for tomorrow, because you've got to always be looking for the future teachers. You can't just be looking at what teachers you've got. You've got to be planning for the future. So all that came into it. So for me, I found that very stressful. I found senior, being a senior tutor a tremendous responsibility, but um, I found it stressful because I just love working with the spirit and people. I love working with uh, people. Um, so managerial organisation is not good for me. So never ask me on a committee because... Uh, I'll ruin it, okay. And also, it, it can become very political, not from yeah. you personally, but towards you. Yeah. As the person in the limelight, it can, what, what can begin to be <coughs> really what? a lovely thing to be invited to do can, can turn on its head because then you get quite, not you <coughs> personally, but people who, who are up there I say up there, they they can have quite a bit of negativity aimed towards them too, and for no reason as well, can't they? It's so it, it's made doubly difficult. Then I think I think the saying is you can please some of the people some of the time, but you can't please all the people all of the time. No, uh, and that's the problem. And and of course within spiritualism, the other pro if there is a problem with spiritualism, of course, is we are free. So we don't have to agree with each other. Uh, we don't have to all follow the same drummer. We all we're all independent because we're all personally responsible. But in the situation of you being in any form of leadership, is the criticism, the jealousy, uh, and somebody feeling that you're not listening to them. Yes. And um, now you're your own boss doing your own thing, you and Jean. How free is that? Oh, it's fabulous. Absolutely <laughs> fabulous. I love it. I love it. Uh, I, I, I think that uh, this has been, you know, many, many years ago, you know, how when you're very young, I would have been about 18, I think. I, I went to, to have my fortune told by a gypsy and he said to me, I would not start to enjoy my life till I was much older in life. So past my middle years, that's what he told me. And, it, and he was quite right, because it is past my middle years. But I'll tell you this, I'm having a ball, really. I love going away. I love coming home. I love the new things that I see. I've been to places I would have never have imagined I'd go to. Um, so really now, I, I've got this luxury, really, I suppose you would call it, uh, but the other thing I've got is I've got a lot of, I just love everything that I do. So, um, you know, I don't have to worry about management. I don't have to book a, a train ticket or a flight ticket. I don't have to worry whether I've got the paperwork up for a, a lecture because Jean's done it, you know. <laughs> so I'm really, really, I've just got to say I am absolutely spoiled. Okay, uh, and I do appreciate it. I do appreciate it, and I hope everybody finds a genie. <laughs> <laughs> she's, 
she is a wonder to behold she really is she is she gets on my nerves sometimes you know <laughs> she'll, she'll, she'll try and pin me down and i want to go and do my washing or <laughs> do my dusting or vacuum and no we have to do this you know <laughs> we, it, it's lovely it's a lovely life and and i wouldn't swap it and you know i have met wonderful wonderful people yes to wonderful places but the people I've met, uh, spiritual people that I've met, um, they've been a joy in my life. They've been a joy in my life. And working with the spirit world, I, I, I mean, what greater task could God have given you than to be a servant of the spirit yes. world? You know, there's no greater task he could have given us. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it, you reap the harvest from the two worlds, don't you? What I like is, I don't know how many mediums we've got listening, but, you know, you've got the love coming from the spirit world, and then you've got the love coming from the audience. You're wrapped up in this big bubble of love. Yes. And they're letting you absorb it. Yes. It's not your love, but they're letting you have that love. And I think, wow, it's a wow. Okay, that's how I see it. It's a it wow. is. It is. And um, I was going to ask you, over the years, of course, I know that sadly many of the mediums who um, we both will remember from um, the earlier years have gone to the spirit world now. And uh, I wondered, you know, when you were at, um, at the college as a tutor, and I know that you all would have got up to goodness knows what in the in the lounges and uh, the laughs that you had together. And I do remember, because of course, each district used to have their week, didn't they? Absolutely. They were fabulous weeks. They we were, used to they? dress up. We used, yes. to do, we used to have concerts. We used to do all kinds of things. Oh, it was fabulous, yes. I think we had the best of the college, but then again, I suppose the generation now thinks sort of got the best of the college. But yeah, I loved it when we used to have Manchester Week and uh, Southern uh, Southern Week and Scottish Week and Highland Week, and it was just absolutely brilliant. Yeah, uh, it's a shame that that came to an end. It kept us all together. Yeah, and the thread was you see the thread was, and this is the thread. The thread was Gordon. Because even though he didn't stay for the whole week sometimes, he would be there for one or two days. Yes. You know, you'd, 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 sometimes he wouldn't arrive until midnight or, you know, so like 10 o'clock at night. You would know he'd arrived. Even though he came in through the kitchen, you could feel his presence. Yes. You just knew he was there. You knew he was there. He didn't have to appear. You just knew he'd arrived. And it was like... He's arrived, he's arrived, and it would go all the way around this college. Like a ripple. He's, arrived. he's here, he's here. Okay. <laughs> I think sometimes because they were afraid he'd let them down, but at least he came. Okay. Yes. But he was the thread that kept us all together. Uh, uh, and, and he actually had the capacity to do the balancing act. He could do the diplomacy and do the balancing act. And, and that wasn't easy, but you know, he had a lot of brick bricks and he had a lot of stones thrown at him. And I can remember once there was something in the psychic news that somebody was criticizing him from something. And I remember phoning him up and saying, look, you need to write an article for the psychic news and tell them um, that this isn't right and that isn't right and that you didn't do this and you didn't do that. And he said, maybe if I've ever got to defend what I do, then I am less of a person. And he wouldn't defend himself. It, you know, if we wanted to defend him, it was okay, but he would not defend himself. Yeah. And, and I thought that was just so amazing. Um, it was just so amazing that he, because he really, he really did have a rough time. He you know, did. we think we have a rough time with criticism and backbiting and what have you. Uh, it's a shame humanity is not changing, isn't it? But we're not changing. And we could change, but we should perhaps we are in a way. But with Gordon, um, I just know the pain that humanity made him suffer, that he didn't need to suffer. No, he didn't. Uh, he didn't need to suffer it. He did the very best he could do. And that's like all of us, really. But not everybody will see the other side of the coin. 
So that's why we've got to deal with the criticism. Let it roll off your back. Yeah. I always say to the students, and Brenda and all are, are on, and uh, they'll know, because I always say to them, don't criticise yourself, because there are other people out there that will do a better job <laughs> than you can. Okay? And it's true. It's true. Just just don't criticise yourself. Let somebody else do it. It's <laughs> wasting their time, not yours. Don't waste your time on it. Okay? Nice. Um, and it's unfortunate, but that is a that is a truth, isn't it? But Gordon, yeah. His, that was his saying, no, I will never defend. I will defend everybody's right to speak. Yes. I won't defend myself against other people, what they're saying. Because he believed they had the right. Mind you, we when I was coming into the movement, one of the first big dems I did with him in a, in a town hall, um, there was a group of people, well, a big line of people, and they got placards, don't suffer a witch to live, and shaking the Bible in front of my face, saying, you're evil, and this, that, and the other. And I was so angry, and I went up, and I was about to, you know, retaliate. Yes. And Gordon came up, and he said, come on, away from it. <laughs> if you have to defend your faith, you don't believe in it enough. If you believe in what you're doing, then your actions, your thoughts, and your deeds should show it, not the words you speak. Yes. And that's what he said. I can't say I followed it very well, but I tried. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you think that was the feisty Mavis coming out there? I think that was the, uh, yes, I think, well, I am feisty and I'm bad tempered, aren't I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and that's the lovely thing about it. And you know, you know, nobody's perfect here. We're all on a journey, and it's a journey of exploring ourselves. Um, and it's a, an exploration of, of being knowing yourself, but not judging yourself. You know, yeah, I am feisty. Yeah, I can be argumentative. Yeah, when I'm in the power and the spirits working with me. I'm all right, okay. Um, you know, but I'm this ordinary human being, and that's why I don't like the word gift being used too much. Because yes. if you're gifted, then I should be in an orange robe, or I should have. <laughs> you know, do you know what I mean? I, I, you come across as this spiritual being, and I've got all the answers, and I haven't because I'm still learning. Yes, I think um, the word using the word gifted. I think everybody has a gift um some people are gifted with music some people are gifted with a wonderful singing voice i wasn't blessed with one of those i have to say some people are gifted cooks and bakers or hairdressers or or whatever they may be um yeah. and i know i don't what did you do before you did all this what do you think you would have been doing if you hadn't have been a medium I think I'd have been married with children, uh, probably still working in a factory or something. I don't think I would have been doing what I'm doing now. Because um, that's the generation I came up in. My mother's generation did that and yes. her mother before her. So I had no real expectations of doing anything, only having children. Um, uh, and, you know, putting my husband's food on the table at six o'clock when he comes in and making sure clothes were washed and ironed. And, you know, so I can't say that I, I believe I would have done anything other than, than, than just being a normal person, uh, just, just doing an ordinary life. Mm -hmm. And um, you don't have anything like an ordinary life now, maybe. No, no, it's <laughs> shocking then. <laughs> it's wonderful isn't it so when did you Absolutely. start to go um venture beyond the british shores well that was gordon really i think gordon started that um uh, because what gordon believed was that medium should be always where there is war uh because he he believed where there was discord that's where we needed to be yes. and um uh, I know I was traveling with him and he said, I think we need to go over to Ireland. We need to go over to Ireland and work in Ireland. Um, and it was when it was really bad over there. Um, he didn't come with me, but I went over to Ireland. I went over twice actually, but um, the first time I went, um, it, it, 
it wasn't it wasn't nice at all. Um, and then the next time was Israel, uh, because Israel was having a very bad time. Um, so I went over to Israel, and from there, then uh, uh, you know those were the two that really Gordon felt that impressed that a medium should be there to try and help to ignite other mediums, but also to to actually talk about peace and life after death and you know help the bereaved uh, uh, and the suffering really that's what he believed we were about that was that was really a, and if you wanted to call it calling that was the calling uh, that Gordon believed in okay that we, we we were here as mediums to actually alleviate pain whether it's this world or the next okay uh, so I did those two and then from there um, I went over to Iceland um, and did some work in Iceland and then it just branched out. It just branched out. So um, then I started to travel um, and, and, you know, by invitation, really. Yes. Um, and it was all by invitation. But uh, Gordon was the instigator of that. Um, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and I'll always thank him for it. Uh, but we used to laugh because I used to say, how come I went to Ireland and you stayed home and went to Scotland? <laughs> when I went to Israel, well, how, where, where were you when I were in Israel? Um, <laughs> so, you know, uh, there's always that humour, you know. We can't be so serious or take ourselves so serious. You know, we mustn't. No. We mustn't. We, because we are human beings after all. But we used to have some good laughs. And, uh, and we used to take pontings over, you know. You know, yeah, we used to we used to take pontings over. I think we, we used to do it once a year. Um, so we'd take a small pontings over. I can't remember uh, the name. I think it was Prestatin. I could be wrong, so don't quote me on that one. Uh, but we'd go, and, and all the spiritualists would come, and it was like a spiritual jamboree. So we'd have mediumship during the day. And then we'd have the social at night. So, you know, you could play bingo, you could do karaoke, you could dance. So all that went on of an evening. And that was a wonderful. But I remember once going with, we were, we were doing this one. And it was, it was, um, uh, uh, oh, what's it called, Jean? Where you, uh, they call names, that numbers out. Bingo. Bingo. Okay. You just said it. Did I? Oh, right. <laughs> uh, you can say, I'm getting tired now, so. But bingo. So uh, we, we said, come and play bingo with us. Never played bingo in my life. Wouldn't know how to play it and I'll be bored. No, come. So we forced him to come and play bingo. Well, it was a nightmare. <laughs> because, you know, when they call us and and two little ducks, 22. Yes. So Gordon's looking for the ducks, you know. Uh, it, it was just a nightmare. He just made it so funny. Uh, the caller was in an uproar. The the whole room was in an uproar. You know, like number 10 Downing Street, not the zero off and you've got one. What's he doing now, you know? <laughs> I don't think he even ever put a mark on his paper to, to, to mark off. But we had such a good time. And, uh, you know, he was he, he had such a sense of humour. And he was a very, very good mimic. He'd mimic you. Uh, and he'd take all, all, the, all the mediums, you know. He'd go into the blue room of the night and, and he'd take all the mediums off. And, uh, but he was so funny with it. So I've got a lot of wonderful, wonderful memories that really I hold close to my heart. Some I've written about, some that, you know, I remember today and I'll forget tomorrow and then I'll remember in a week's time. But yeah. they're all there written in the spirit world, of course. Okay. That is wonderful, isn't it? That you can just recall all of those things just like that. And you, what did you say? I can't remember stuff. I can't remember <laughs> it all. There's so much I can't remember. And sometimes, like Jean said, I just said bingo and then I lost it. Uh, it's not that I'm getting senile dementia, is it? <laughs> it's just that sometimes I get a bit tired. Well, uh, there's that much mystery. in there, you see. That's what it is. Pardon? There's that much in there. Yes. Too so much. many memories in there. That yeah. It's but, but you know there's there's far more joy than sadness yes there's far more more laughter than tears uh sometimes you've got to dig around and find it but i know for everybody uh, if we really look we'll find the laughter along with the tears 
uh, because it's there if you look. And, and you know, in this time of the pandem pandemic, that's what we've got to think about. We've got to think, yeah, things are bad. Things are terrible at the moment, but you know, let's look at all the hundreds of people that are going out to work so that we can be locked down, you know, yeah. and how we can send healing prayers now and we can be more aware of the normal things of life. Uh, so yeah, I think that we can, um, you know, there's just been that awful murder, hasn't there, in uh, the United States and yeah. some of our friends, of course, have live, live in, in some of the areas that at the moment are going through this and you think how on uh what what can we do and i think sitting down to pray yes i think sitting down to pray can do far more good than we know and that's the problem isn't it because how do we know we've done good and because we're always needing to know we've been right or we've been wrong you know we don't just do it for doing sake but we'll never know how many people will help with this would you, would you agree Mavis that prayer is underrated absolutely absolutely we don't talk about it we don't get people involved with it um you can go to a, a church now and they'll say oh no it's a clairvoyant evening there's no prayer there's no talk I don't believe we should ever ever not actually do something philosophical before a demonstration not telling them about how good a medium you are or what your mediumship is i think we should be philosophical or we should say a prayer okay yes but, but they, they i don't i you know we've got to turn it round the mediums of tomorrow have got a much tougher job than my, than mine because they've got to turn this round they've got to turn it they've got to turn people away from clairvoyance and away from the psyche and bring them into the philosophical understanding uh, of everybody living together in harmony and and utilizing the power of the spirit world for the right reasons not to find your ring that you lost last week or your front door key and you know i mean we've even still got people that are saying oh and my guide found me a parking space well, can't you find your own parking space? Okay. You know, it's like an abuse, isn't it? You it know? Is. It it's is. like an abuse and we've got to change it. And the only way in which we'll change it is by actually philosophically and, and straight saying to people, no, I'm not coming to them for you. If you don't allow me to speak philosophically about spiritualism, then no, I'm not coming. It's yes. not the right place for me. Yes. Yeah. I, I did once uh, take a service and uh, I was told um, we won't be doing the Lord's Prayer. Okay, I understand for some that is a conflict. Yeah. Um, it was a divine service. We won't be singing any hymns and I do love the traditional hymns. So we sang Westlife. Okay. Um, and um, we only want a five minute address because they'll get up and walk out if you do any longer. Yeah. I was um, shocked, to be honest, because that isn't what spiritualism was built on, was oh, it? No, but it's, it's what we've let it fall into. Yes. And, it, and it's my generation's fault. It's not the future generation's fault. It's not Brenda's or Oriel's or I can't see your name, but I know I should know you. Okay, <laughs> uh, uh, it's not their fault. It, it's it's my fault because you know somehow I've allowed that to happen, and I haven't stood up and said no. I'm not coming anymore. I won't come to this church if you're going to do that. This is not right for me, so I can't do it. Uh, and and it's taken me a long time to get to the point where I would refuse to go to a church now. If it's not, if I'm not allowed to speak spiritual or spiritualism uh, or philosophical in some way, then don't invite me to come because I'm I'm not coming, you know. And I think that that that's it. And, and you know, when you start out on this but this this journey, you're so thankful that people are letting you work you let them run rings around you because you want to work. You want to work, don't you? Yeah. You know, and if somebody invites you, my God, I'm going. 
So it's very difficult when you're setting out uh, to actually tell somebody, no, I'm not coming because you don't let me have my own way. So perhaps it's up to you and I, and I can see Roger there, and I can see uh, Neil there. It's up to you and I to be able to say, no, I, I need to be able to say the prayer, and I need to be able to speak the spiritualist truth. Yeah. So, and, and if they don't want us back, then, then we really are honouring the spirit. We? And we're honouring the pioneers, you see. Maybe the way in which we will reopen is that opportunity mm -hmm. to go back to being a religion. Because, as we said, as spoke before about the difficulties of not just opening the churches, but visiting mediums as well, and, and the um, dynamics of how that's all going to work. But maybe, and this is something we've spoken about, maybe to start with, just to open the church, just to invite people to come and sit in the sanctuary of the church. Yeah. I think, I think if, if anything, um, when, I don't know if you've ever, um, well, you won't have been to the Journey Within in, in, in the USA, but uh, there's a, a lovely church called the Journey Within in the USA. Mm. They have so much going on. They have uh, what you're saying, you know, prayer, prayer circles. They have healing circles. They have uh, social justice circles. They have humanitarian circles. Uh, they have so much going on in the church that it's not just mediumship. Yeah. Oh, so she's got so the interaction in the church is so vast but they let everybody join in so everybody's got a voice not just the mediums yes it's wonderful isn't it last last week somebody said within the spiritualist churches we have nothing to prove in terms of mediumship anymore but what we what we can well yes what we can do uh, because of the fact that there's uh, mediumship can be so easily accessed anywhere else that that was what the point of that was making um why not just go back to basics to how we were oh i, I think i think that very well we could do i mean our sunday service uh, we only used to do two contacts on a sunday yeah. because the measure of the time was the philosophy but yeah. we then we had a speaker and a demonstrator Yes. Now we don't have a speaker and a demonstrator. We only have a demonstrator that does the speaking. Yes. You no. Know, so I don't know, but thank God I don't have to be in a position of authority to sort it out. I'll just say, <laughs> David, my blessings and my prayers, okay? Because I don't have that quarrel, uh, that, that <laughs> thing to sort out. Okay. Oh, Mavis, time has caught up, and I know that you're you're getting tired now so you need to go and have another cup of tea and a fag <laughs> right. my yeah. cigarettes are right here as soon as the button goes i'm lighting up <laughs> thank um, you so much and thank you jean too thank you both so much for being hello being on this morning and agreeing to come and have a chat with me i hope it hasn't been painful for you <laughs> <laughs> i enjoyed listening even though i've heard it <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's nice and bright chit chat, and we've moved through things. We haven't stayed, and it hasn't been, it hasn't been stayed. It's been nice. I've enjoyed it. Very it's nice. Been more more like, nice. It's more like a fireside chat, and that's lovely. It is. Yeah. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, everybody else. And um, I would say God bless to you both, and I hope that you can get back on the road whenever we're able to do so and i've got my 2021 calendar ready for dates for next year <laughs> <laughs> well we're booking now Kat, oh, so you better get oh, brilliant. <laughs> and also Good. your students too because of course we do invite those to come and serve the church which yes, is we do. Oh, yeah and we're very grateful for that thank yeah. you all have a wonderful afternoon god bless you bye-bye bye-bye